Hi, we're going to talk about the diffuse lung diseases. So a nice approach to uh, reading chest CT is to first take a look at the pattern or distribution of the lesions. So take a bird's eye view and look where is the where are the lesions predominant? Is it upper or lower? Um, because certain diseases would prefer the upper lung zones, while there are some would, who, which would develop in the lower lung zones. This difference is due to the difference in the ventilation and perfusion. Because the upper lung zones are relatively overventilated, etiologies such as inhalational in mechanism like for example inhalational of inhalational occupational or occupational exposures like silicosis or coal workers pneumoconiosis that's, that's gonna give you an upper lung zone predominant disease the same way that hypersensitivity pneumonitis or when you inhale antigens that's gonna be upper to mid lung zone predominant also um, same is true when you have um, diseases developing from um, smoking, also upper lung zone predominant. Aside from overventilation, there is also decreased lymphatic drainage in the upper part of the lungs because unlike in the lower part of the lungs where you have the um, contraction of the thorax or of your chest wall, um, the upper lung zone does not have that luxury. That's why there is more stasis in the upper lung zone. That's why it also is the region preferred by mycobacterium, for example, in addition to the relative overventilation. Now, for the lower lung zones, it's relatively overperfuse. So, pathologies which travel in the blood or in the lymphatics, just like when you have um, hematogenous metastasis, it's going to get lodged in the lower lung zones because of the greater perfusion there or blood flow. The same is true when you have interstitial lung disease, when you have immune complexes deposited um, in the lungs, which is responsible for the fibrosis. Okay, so interstitial lung disease are lower lung zone predominant because of that. After you take a look um, uh, about look on which lung zone is predominant to take a look at the distribution um, if you take a look here on the picture on the right knowing the structures within the secondary pulmonary lobule is going to make you um, it's going to allow you to predict what distribution the nodules will be for example if you have nodules distributed here to involve the pleura okay and the fissures okay that's gonna be a nodule in the with a perilymphatic or random distribution it is because when you have a centrilobular nodule it's gonna be here smack in the center okay because the secondary pulmonary lobule is comprised of this polyhedral structure in which the center is your airway with its corresponding um, branch of the pulmonary artery. Okay, so notice here, this is the airway and then you have the artery here. It has this yellow component. This yellow component which um, invests this bronchovascular bundle is your axial interstitium. The axial interstitium as well as the peripheral interstitium or subpleural interstitium would also contain your lymphatics. Okay? So again, going back, involvement of the pleura or the fissures is going to be perilymphatic or random. Now, if you have a uh, if you take a look at the nodules and they really they tend to cluster around the, this lymphatic structures, you're gonna call that perilymphatic. If they're diffuse and is scattered everywhere, okay, you call that random.
Now, um, next point is try to think about the whether the pathology affects your interstitium or is it affecting your airspace or small airways. So an interstitial pattern would be um, reticular or lace-like in appearance. Just imagine this area, you have the scaffolding or the um, interstitium, um, which is disease, you're going to get a reticular or lace-like pattern. If you have ground gas opacity or ground gas opacification, it can either be an interstitial, an airspace, or a pathology of both. Um, next, take a look at the septal thickening, whether if it's smooth or irregular. Okay, Smooth denotes that um, it can be secondary to edema. Irregular, it can be due to for example, lymphadenic carcinomatosis. Mm. Let's skip this one. Let's discuss this later. How about this one? Airspace pattern. When you say airspace, it means the alveoli. Okay. Or here, the, uh, the alveoli or the airspaces are filled with something. That something can be um, fluid, it can be blood, it can be um, exudates, okay? In all of those cases, that filling of those airways can later coalesce and become um, a larger um, opacity. When that opacity starts from the um, alveoli, so here more distally, it's going to spread towards its nearby alveoli. And eventually, it's gonna um, involve a larger part or what we call the low bar pneumonia. Notice that if you develop the air, uh, a pathology in the airspace first or create a low bar pneumonia, the airways here are relatively spared. That's why if this is a consolidated part in the midst of an intact airway, you're going to see air bronchograms. Unlike in the lobular type of uh, pneumonia. In the lobular type, the disease process starts from the bronchiole, peribronchiola, peribronchiolar in location. Okay, so that's um, a bit different. So in that case, you're going to get patchy opacities in the in X-ray. Okay, now differentiating ground gas opacification versus consolidation. Uh, ground gas is when you see the airway or vessels through that area of increased attenuation. When you say consolidation, you can no longer see the vessels or uh, vessels and airway through it. Okay, now talking about cystic air spaces. Um, in the background of emphysema to slum, where you have a destruction of the alveoli, you may develop a bullet or more than one cm uh, lucencies. Compare a bully, compared to the cyst, a bully will not have a complete um, margin, will not be marginated, unlike a cyst. A cyst is completely marginated. Okay? A thin walled cyst would make you think about eosinic, eosinophilic granuloma or histiocytosis X in a 30 year old smoker or lamb linked. Lymphangiomyomatosis in a uh, childbearing age woman. While if you have a thick wall cyst located in the periphery of the lung or subplural in location, it's gonna make you think that something happened with the bronchioles. 
okay, the distal airway or the bronchioles which have a little bit of smooth muscle on its walls. Um, got dilated. They got pulled apart because of fibrotic tissue. So in your interstitium, look here in the picture on the right. If you have an interstitium here that is fibrotic, it's gonna pull apart okay, the, airway, the adjacent, adjacent airways. And that's gonna produce your honeycombing. Now what about air trapping? Air trapping um, is a finding when you see that the abnormal lung is loosened okay, while the normal lung is more dense. Air trapping can be seen on inspiratory scans as we usually do but it is more seen or accentuated in expiratory scans. Another part pattern is the mosaic, mosaic perfusion or oligemia, which we are going to talk about very shortly.